everybody, and welcome back to a brand new episode of Brewing with 50 Bucks. This is the show where we take your favorite commander, we slap on a $50 budget, and not only we make a deck that is viable, but also one that is able to help you win the game. My name is Seth, and I'm coming to you from the General Warfare Headquarters. I'm glad you can join us today, as today we have a very, very special Brewing Bet video. As you may know from last year, I did one of these before, and the last video I came out with that came out two weeks ago also alluded to it, but welcome to Halloween time, welcome to October, and welcome to this year's very first horror brew. So, how horror brews work is that every October I'm going to be taking at least one to two horror movie villains or horror movie characters, whether it be an antagonist or protagonist, I will create a custom card for it, and I'll make an entire deck tech revolving around them. Last year we've already seen Freddy Krueger, if you want to take a look at that video, it's going to be on the top right of your screen right now, but this year is going to be very different, as in this case we actually have a new movie coming out in the franchise Starting actually today, technically speaking. So, without, without further ado, let me take a look at Michael Myers. Before we do the actual card itself, we're going to go over a little bit of background from Michael Myers. So, Michael Myers, or in the Shape, Shape, had his first appearance in Halloween in 1977, directed by the legendary John Carpenter, who directed The Fog, Big Trouble, Little China, Escape from New York, and Assault in Precinct, Precinct 13. Now, Michael Myers, over the last 40 years, and spanning 13 different films, including this one coming out today, was played by six different actors, and currently, before adding the kills from this new movie, Michael has a kill count of 92 victims. So, with that being all said, we have the new movie Halloween Ends out in theaters right now. This video is not sponsored by it, but I do implore you guys, if you are horror nerds like I am, to go check it out because this might be the very last Halloween film we have with Willie Strode and Michael Myers together. Or at least that's how it's advertised. But with that, we're not going to waste any more time and we're going to take a look at our commander today, Michael Myers, The Shape. So, ultimately speaking, this is again a custom made card. This has nothing to do with actual paper magic, unless Magic down the line wants to make an entire anthology of horror uh, movie characters, which I am 100% on board. And who is here to be listening to this? To make it happen, please. Or at least feature me in one of them. <laughs> but nonetheless, we are going to be taking a look at Michael Myers' shape. Let's not waste any more time and let's take a look at the deck strategy and the commander breakdown for this card. So, Michael Myers' The Shape is a 5-5 five five for 3 black black legendary human with indestructible and war to pay 5 life. It also has the ability 4 black black and tap, destroy target creature with mana value 5 or less, then Michael Myers deals damage to that creature's controller equal to its toughness. And lastly, when Michael Myers dies, exile him and return him back to the field on your next pre-combat main phase. So ultimately speaking, I want to create the card that wanted to truly represent Michael Myers in his, in his glory. So Michael Myers is notorious for being one of the most hardest movie villains to kill and to, be, and to put down ultimately. So keeping him indestructible is one way of doing it. And considering the fact that almost nobody really gets a good shot in on Michael Myers, I can stick him down for good. Ward, five, Ward paid five life is kind of, I want to say reasonable rather than putting hexproof on him. And the, back, the added ability is just pretty much just gravy as Michael Myers is notorious for having one shot kills. So that, that six mana caveat to destroy a creature with mana value five or less is pretty, it is kind of strong, I will admit, but it's better than having, than just destroying a creature in general. I want to be kind of fair with this card. But with that being said, the text, the deck strategy for this deck, we're actually going with more of a Voltron build with this as I feel since Michael Myers, his, one of his trusty uh, weapons is a chef's knife. And so basically what, he, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be equipping him up with a lot of knives, so to speak. So basically what we're going to be doing is playing our creatures or even Michael himself. We're going to be dumping some equipment on the field and we're going to be going for that kill. And as always, we build these decks with a budget of $50, which includes the price of the commander, which excludes the price of the basic lands. And we also offer a $5 overage compromise. So this deck can be built for $50, but the compromise is available for those who can spare the extra $5 to add some cool stuff into it. The link for the deck list will be in the show notes down below, and if I can ask you guys for a very, very, very small favor, if you guys like this kind of content and you want to subscribe to the channel, just please consider liking this video, sharing it amongst your playgroup, or find whoever you know might like Magic the Gathering content. Subscribe to the channel and hit that bell icon to be notified of every single future video that comes out. And if you've done so, thank you very, very much. I truly appreciate it. 
So we'll be going over the standard array of categories as we usually do in, this, in these videos. And considering that this is a proxy card, we, there is gonna be a little bit of overlap, but nonetheless, we're gonna start going, looking over our enchantments, our creatures, our artifacts, our instants, our sorceries, and our lands. And usually we like to start with our most cumbersome of categories, but in this case, if there's one category you wanna look at more in depth and more attunedly, there are gonna be chapters in the video down below, so you can, skip, you can skim through this video and find the right area you wanna to go to. So, we're gonna be starting off today with our artifacts. This is going to be the biggest chunk of our deck. We are running 30 artifacts. I believe this is the most I put into any deck, be it, whether, be it a real or a proxy deck itself. 30 artifacts makes up almost about a third of our deck itself. So, we're going to start off strong with Basilisk Caller. Basilisk Caller allows Michael Myers to have Death Touch and Life Flake, so it's going to be kind of easy for him. Not even just getting through, through for some deck, extra damage, but he's also going to, we're going to get getting some life off him for one and two. Whenever somebody touch, whenever somebody touches him, they die immediately without him having to activate his ability. Black Labor Forge is just a giant knife for him, but it's going to boost him up for each land we control, and we're just going to equip him for three mana. Brass Buckets allows us to give Michael double strike as long as two or more equipments are attached to him, and the best part of it is equip one, and it copies itself whenever it comes into play. Charcoal Diamond allows us to tap for an extra black mana, but at the cost of it coming to play tap on the turn it comes in. Chariot of Victories allows Michael to have First Strike, Trample, and Haste when he hits the battlefield, and the best part, it's equip one. Commander Sphere is a double whammy, as for three mana, it allows you to tap for, for one mana of any color of your commander's color identity, which is black in our case, but you can sacrifice it to draw a card at any point in time. Coronial Plating allows us to boost Michael's power up by one for each artifact we control, and for two black, we can attach it at any po point in time. We attach it to any creature we want to, and also equip one. Everflowing Chalice is going to give us some extra mana on the field, but the multi kicker is two for each one charge counter we want to put on him, and however much mana we want to sink into the flap of the Chalice. Executioner's Hood is a lot going to allow Michael to have Intimidate, which allows him to not be able to be blocked except for artifact creatures or creatures that share a color with it and with an equip cost of two. Fire Shrieker gives Michael Double Strike for an equip cost of two as well. Golden Skin Gauntlets. It also allows us to boost Michael's power by one for each equipment attached to it instead, but with the equip cost of two instead. Haunted Cloak will give Michael Vigilance. It'll also give him Trample and Haste with the equip cost being one. Heraldic Banner is another mana, mana source for us, but for this we get to choose a color, namely black. Creature who we control will get plus one plus zero, and we get to tap it for a mana of our, that chosen color as well. Hero's Blade will give a little boost to Michael. It's also the shape of a little bit of a knife, but it would be even better whenever a legendary creature comes into play. We can attach, we can attach the Hero's Blade immediately onto them. So Michael can immediately get that extra boost on top of him. Hero's Heirloom now is a new card from Dominaria United, but for this, for two magic, if the equipped creature gets plus two plus one, and if it's legendary, it gets Trample and Haste, and the equip cost is also two. Flash Rake will come into play and it'll give Michael plus one plus one for each swarm control. We can equip it, we can equip it for two for XC matters. You can pay for either a black matter or two life to equip the cost. But a Lash Rake will come into play, and considering it's a living weapon, it'll come into play attached to a Phyrexian germ attached to it. Luxodon Warhammer give, comes into play and will get Luxodon and Warhammer will give Michael a plus three power boost and will give him trample and lifelink for the equip cost of three as well. Mask of Gristlebrand is gonna give Michael some flying and some lifelink, and whenever Michael dies, I can pay, we can pay X life where X is the power and we can draw some cards off top of it. And rem reminder, Mike, whenever Michael dies, you just exile him instead. So the ability for Grab Master Virtual Battle will still trigger, but Michael will still be exiled and come into play on your next pre combat main phase. Nettle Cyst is also a living weapon, which will also come attached, will have a Phyrexian germ attached to it. But the best part about it is that an equipped creature will get plus one plus one for each artifact and an aura enchantment we control. And with the best part being the equipped cost of two. Nightmare Lash is going to be one of our, our more expensive artifacts on here, where Twix a 3 life, the equipped creature will get plus 1 plus 1 for each swamp we control. We're going to be running a lot of swamps in this deck, so there's going to be no pressure for us to catch either yeah, Lash Rife or the Nightmare Lash. 
Oh, Nagi Nada will, is a one mana artifact that can come into play. It can only be attached to creatures with power three or greater. And Michael Myers will get plus three plus O oh, and trample with it. And the equip cost is going to two. Star Compass is another mana source where it comes into play tapped, but when it comes untapped, you can add a mana of any color of the basic line we can produce, so that's going to be mainly black. Strata Scythe will come into play in Brick itself. Basically, you get to, you get to search for a land card, and exile it, and then shuffle your library, and Strata Scythe will basically partner up the same way Nightmare Lash and Lash Right will be, where you get a plus one, plus one for each land of the cherry on the battlefield of the chosen type. But it does not limit the does not limit to the swamps that you control, it's every swamp on the battlefield, with an equipment cost of three. Swift of Boost is a predominant favorite in this deck where it'll give Michael Myers Hexproof and Haste at the equip cost of one. Sword of Vengeance is a is a great card will give where it'll give Michael Myers a plus two power boost and it'll give him first strike, vigilance, trample, and haste with an equip cost of three. Unstable Obelisk is another mana source where we tap for colorless, but for seven mana and tap it and sacrifice the obelisk, we get to destroy a target permanent instead. The Vorpal Sword is just there for the memes. It'll give Michael Myers a plus two power boost and death touch. Equip two black mana, but for five and three black mana, until end of turn, Vorpal Sword gains when this when equipped creature deals combat damage to a player, that correct player loses the game. It's in there for flavor, obviously speaking, but that Vorpal Sword ability active activation ability is just gonna be bonkers. Wayfarer's Bobble is going to let us search up our library for a basic land and put it onto the battlefield at the cost of it. P2 mana and cracking the Wayfarer's Bobble. Whisper Silk Cloak will give Michael Myers unblockable and shroud at the equip cost of two. And our last artifact of this is War Power Stone. For three mana, it'll come into play tapped on the first turn, but one and untapped, it'll give you two colorless mana. Our next category up is our sorceries. So, this is a second deck in a row that I've built where more, there has been more sorceries than instants in this deck, but for the most part, we're gonna be mostly focusing a lot on our, our, uh, on our turns rather than our opponent's turns in this case. So, with that being said, we're gonna start off the list with Ambitious Cost, where for four mana, we get to draw three cards and lose three life. It's never bad to draw some extra cards on top of it. Never bad to draw some extra cards for your turn and to fill up your hand a little bit more. Deadly Tempest will destroy all creatures, and for each, each player will lose life equal to the number of creatures that you control that were that destroyed this way. So keep in mind as well, Michael Myers has Indestructible, so you won't be losing the life if he's the only creature on your side of the field that goes, but everybody else will be losing life for each creature that goes because of the Deadly Tempest. Decree of Pain is one of our more costly, uh, well, money-wise costly cards, where it'll, for eight mana, you destroy all creatures, and you draw a card for each creature destroyed this way, but you can also cycle it for five mana, and if you do cycle it, each creature gets minus two, minus two until end of turn. Demonic Illusion and Diabolic Tutor, and Final Pardoning are our three main tutors. I am pairing them up because I want to get the tutors all, all out of the way. All of them allow you to search your library for a card and put it into your battlefield. Demonic Illusion has the buyback to discard two cards instead, and it'll come back to your hand. Final party will search out for two cards, where one of them will go to your graveyard and the other to your hand, and Diabolic Tutor will just tutor up a, sing a single card and put it into your hand. Feed the Swarm allows you to destroy a target creature or enchant an opponent controls at the cost of you losing life equals the mana value of that permanent. Head Games is also in here mostly just for memes, because, well, memes and for flavor, I should say, because for one, Michael Myers is known for his head games, to so to speak. But for this, this is also great as target opponent puts the card, puts the cards in his hand, in their hand, on top of their library. You get to search that player's library for that many cards, and then they put those cards in their hand, and you shuffle and they shuffle their library afterwards. Read the Bones allows you to strike two cards, draw two cards, and then lose two life. Spine and Blood is the same thing, except without the scry, where you just draw two cards and lose two life. And the last of our sorceries is Siphon Mind, where for four mana, each player. Each other player discards a card, and you draw cards for each card discarded this way. Our next category up is our instance. This, like I said, is gonna, it's not too far off away from the amount of sorceries we have. There are 11 sorceries, we have nine instants in this category, but for this case, we want, we do want some instant speed interaction, but for the most part, we're gonna be mostly targeting our opponent's stuff in this case. Starting off with a, with a Stereo's Thirst, for four mana, you get to exit a target creature and put X plus one plus one counters on a commander creature you control, where X is the power of the creature's exile this way. 
So, keep in mind, if you have Michael Myers on the field without the Whisper Silk Cloak, because the trap will not allow you to target Michael Myers, you have this on the field, and you have, like, this, let's just say, a Kozilek on the field. It, when you, you can exile the Kozilek and put 12 plus 1 plus 1 counters on Michael Myers, making him super huge. Cast down will destroy a target non-legendary creature, which is not going to be too bad, as some of a lot of what our opponents are going to be doing is not going to be super Voltron, so get to destroy a meaningless non-legendary creature. Defile will get around Indestructible, where it'll it'll make target creature get minus one, minus one for each, until end of turn for each swamp you control. So, especially so, this is a perfect after, after combat too. If the creature hasn't died, you can just defile them, and they'll just lose the amount of toughness based on the amount of swamps you control, and they could probably just die from that case. Heartless Act will either let you destroy target creature with no counters on it, or remove up to three counters from target creature. So, for the most part, you're be using it for the first ability, where you get to destroy a creature with no counters on top of it. Hero's Downfall allows you to destroy a target creature or Planeswalker for three mana. Infernal Grasp allows you to destroy a target creature at the cost of two life and two mana. Succumb to Temptation for three mana allows you to draw three cards and lose two life. Kind of a one co one off cost of ambitions cost, but I did some speed as well. Tainted Strike is a win con in this deck where for one mana a target creature will get plus one plus oh and it gain infect until end of turn. Infect is one of our main win cons in this deck as it's not just by combat damage, but if you can sneak out an infect win, it's all better. And lastly, of our instance, is Tragic Slip. So with this, ultimately speaking, this pairs well with Michael, so you can destroy a creature on the field, and then you have to just tragic sleep another one, where, where for the Morbid constant, the creature will get minus 13, minus 13 until end of the turn, if a creature died in that turn. We're going to move over now to our creatures. So, we do need, even though this is mainly a Voltron deck based and built around our commander, we do need a couple of creatures on the field, especially some that will help us along the way. Default is Shadow Cat Familiar is one of those. For three mana, it's a 2-2 two -two legendary Nightmare Cat, where commander creatures you control have Menace and Death Touch. So, ultimately, this is one of the partners from the first Commander Legends block, but with Faultus, you can give them, you can give Michael Myers Menace, which is something actually super, super good, and Death Touch, we've already covered multiple times on the Artifacts list, but Menace is always good if you can't get a blockable or if you can't get Trample on top of it. Foundry Inspector allows our Artifact spells to, be, to cost one less to cast, so it's going to be easier for, uh, easier for us to cast our Artifacts and our Equipment spells. Great version of Asphodel. Gary is an, always an, an important include in this deck as Gary allows us to drain our opponents of life and we gain the life back too. He's also a fun little win con, but I wouldn't count on him most, most of the time with this deck as there's not going to be too many times where uh, there's going to be enough uh, black mana symbols for, the great, for Gary to completely murder our opponents. Joy Risk Familiar also allows us our historic spells to cost one less to, act, to cast, so this includes artifacts, legendaries, and sagas. Night Howler is a fun enchanting creature that has bestow two black black. So Night Howler itself gets plus X plus X, where X is the number of creature cards in all graveyards. You can equip this, this to Michael Myers, especially after the amount of onslaught you'll have with him and killing off your opponent's creatures that he'll just end up getting bigger if you uh, if you bestow the Night Howler on top of him. Flake Singer is a fun little 1-1 one -one for two mana with flying and infect, so you have another real funny little thing that you can attach to all your equipments to. Ravenous Chupacabra is another little kill spell for four mana, but it destroys a creature an opponent controls, and the last of our creatures is Solemn Simulacrum. Sad Robot makes the list because he allows us to search our library for a basic land and put it into the battlefield when he comes into play. And he also, when he dies, you get to draw a card as well. Our penultimate category on here is going to be our enchantments. We're only wanting six enchantments here, but for the most part, this little list, this is just the smallest list in contrast to all our artifacts. So we needed a little bit of a dump, and we needed a dump category. This will be our enchantments. Starting off with Demonic Embrace, three mana to enchant a creature will give him plus three, plus one, half flying, and it will be a demon in addition to its other types. And we can cast it from our graveyard by paying three life and discarding a card in addition to paying the other cost. Ultimately speaking, we can just keep casting this from our graveyard if it gets destroyed. And for the fact it will give Michael Myers a boost of three, plus three, plus one, and flying always is a great help as on top of it. Dragon Shadow is 
honestly just a fun card I just found out when looking up this deck. But a Chinese creature gets plus one plus out and has fear. And whenever a creature with converted mana cost six or greater will come into play, you can return the Dragon Shadow from your graveyard onto the battlefield and chant it to the creature. With that, Dragon Shadow, you're never gonna really need it as there's no creatures that we have that are above, that are six converted mana costs or higher. So for the most part, Dragon's Shadow is gonna be just be attaching to Michael Myers and giving him fear. Inner Demon um, also allows us to get to give Michael Myers plus two plus two, give him flying and make him a demon in, in addition to his other types. But when it enters the battlefield, all non-demon creatures will get minus two, minus two until end of turn. So for this, whenever an inner demon comes into play, everybody's creatures will get minus two. Kind of the same as if you would cycle the degree of pain from earlier. But if you could get you could kill off some weenies on top of it and give Michael Myers that extra boost on top of it, that extra boost, it's gonna be game over for your opponents very, very quickly. Phoresis will give infect will give infect to Michael Myers straight up. So like I mentioned before, infect is one of our main win cons, and so we need multiple ways to give our commander infect. Phoresis is another one. Vampiric Link will give Michael Myers uh, pretty much lifelink, not na lifelink, but not lifelink. But because whenever you deal damage, whenever he deals damage, you gain that much life. So it doesn't explicitly say lifelink, but it'll gain extra life on top of it. And the last of our enchantments is Vow of Malice, where it'll give plus two plus two, give him intimidate and roar. Whatever creature you attach it to, they can't attack you or a planeswalker you control. The planeswalker part's not nearly necessary because we don't have any planeswalkers. For that though, giving another opponent's creature of the vow, where if they're especially super, super scary, and they're gonna they're looking your way, you can just put the vow on them, so that way they can't attack you. We come down now to our last category, which is our land base. As always, I mentioned this because this is the fuel that runs our engine. This is the most important part of our deck. This is the, the part of their deck that actually build, that actually makes the deck really work. So with this, we're running 35 lands, starting off with Cathedral War. So namely the Cathedral will come into play tapped, but it gives Exalted, which is kind of rare on a land. So Exalted means that whenever a creature attacks alone, which in a Voltron state it will, that creature will get plus one, plus one until end of turn. And you can tap it for a colorless map. Evolving Wilds, Mirror Landscape, and Terramorphic Expanse all allow us to search our library for a basic plan and put it to Baffle Tap, but Mirror Landscape will come to play Tap first, will actually act as a colorless mana source, and for two mana and tap and sacrifice and say along with me, search your library for a bait, up to two basic lands that share a base a land type, put them onto the battlefield, tap, and then shuffle your library. Rogue's Passage allows us to tap it for a colorless mana, but more importantly, four tap it and give target creature named Michael Myers unblockable until end of turn. And lastly, we're running 30 swamps. And that's how you build Michael Myers, the shape. One of the most notorious horror movie vi icons of the genre, one of the most recognizably unkillable villains in the entire franchise, and ultimately one of my personal favorite horror movie icons. With a deck total today of $50, which includes the price of the commander and excludes the price of the basic lands, we round up, uh, we round up to our deck total today of $55 flat. So with this, this means our budget just it goes a little bit over, but the over compromise gets us exactly to where we need to be. It's exactly at $55, so that means we are still within the budget range. So with that being said, this is not by no means an actual card. I just want to stress that one more time, but this was just a fun little exercise to build some new commanders right off the fly and just some proxy cards just to really get the juices flow. But with that being said, this is just a fun template for any model black deck or just any model black Voltron deck to go ham and wild with. With that being said, we're going to take a look at some pros and cons of this deck. There's going to be no out of budget recommendations for this get deck as this is not a real card, but we're going to end off with the pros and cons for this video. So let's get started with our last little character, our last little thing of this video, which is going to be our pros and cons of this. So starting off with our pros, this is a very quick Voltron deck. In testing, I was able to get a kill off or as early as turn six, turn seven. So this is not exactly like super CDH, it's not super competitive, but this is a very quick deck that if left unmonitored could kill an opponent very, very quickly. Basically for the fact that we have a lot of enchantment, uh, sorry, a lot of equipments that cost only one or two mana, it's just very quick, 
for us to get Michael Myers on the field, equip him with a bunch of stuff, and then start swinging for big, big amounts of damage. And like I said, and before, you can easily kill smaller creatures with this. Especially so, you can also, you can have, you have Michael Myers' ability to just destroy a creature with minor value five or less, and get, and just basically hit your opponent for that much uh, toughness to them. With that being said, you can always you can always boost up your opponent's creatures too if you want to put the enchantments on top of them, then kill them off with Michael Myers' second ability. Or you can always swing first with Michael if he has vigilance with the Sword of Vengeance, with the Haunted Club, or anything else that gives him vigilance. And you can always use the, the ability afterwards to activate and then just kill off your opponent's uh, creatures, or you can do it before their turn themselves. And lastly, it's insanely hard to kill Michael Myers, just like in the movies. So, being an indestructible and warp pay, pay five life, ultimately speaking, as I mentioned before, is kind of very, very strong for a creature, and especially so, because this got really, really, this will make him really, really hard to get rid of. I think the only way you can really get rid of him is not really spot removal, and if you don't want to pay the five, you don't want to take the five life for like a sword to plowshare, but I think like a descend upon the sinful or final judgment or hallowed burial. I think it's I think it's called those are the only cards that do not say kill that do not say kill. That either say exile or put them on the bottom of the library. And in mass will basically get rid of Michael Myers in that in that respect. But spot removal will not really work on him. I want to be kind of faithful to the movies in a certain sense because, like I mentioned before, Michael Myers is notorious for being one of the hardest movie villains to kill. Especially so. And especially racking up a kill count of 92 victims before Halloween ends is an impressive feat and especially something that is even more impressive when you realize that he, this has been going on for over 40 years in our history books. And in some of our cons, namely speaking, is that damage is, our, is pretty much our only win con unless you're able to get out Tainted Strike or Phoresis on the field or even use Plague Singer to build, build them up for that 10 deck damage you need to kill somebody. We're really focusing on damage and we're really, really, really heads down focusing on killing our opponents as quick as like, we possibly can. Uh, mass artifact um, removal will hurt this deck, especially so if somebody plays, like they say, an austere command to destroy all artifacts or back to nature or anything regarding mass artifact removal, that really hurts this deck considering we're running 30 enchantments, we're not really running too much else and we don't really have much other mana, like we don't really have much mana, but mana rocks acceleration without our artifacts. So, if they completely wipe our artifacts, we're pretty much done for. And I mentioned this a bit before in a previous video, but in fact, it will be surely will surely raise an alarm. So ultimately speaking, you don't want to be do you want to throw down the infect card the first person you kill. But for that, you always want to save it as a combat trick because if people start noticing you start playing with infect cards, it's gonna start raising alarms. It's gonna start hyper focusing people to kill you because you only need ten damage point or ten poison counters to kill a pro an opponent. In contrast to the forty life you need for non commander damage and twenty one you need for commander damage. And that's where I'm gonna leave it off there today, guys. What do you guys think of this year's horror brew? Do you like Michael Myers? Are you a fan of the horror, the Halloween franchise? Or is there another hall? Is there another horror movie icon you want me to cover for the next video that might come out? Let me know in the comments down below. And as always, if you want to follow this page and if you want to support it in any way, shape, or form, just please consider liking this video, sharing it with your family, your friends, your playgroup, whoever want, whoever is interested by this kind of content, subscribe to the channel and hit that bell icon because not only would I appreciate it for having some new subs, but this will also help the channel grow and get some more eyes on the channel. You can also follow me on my social medias, which will be linked in the which the links will be in the show notes down below, but you can also follow on, um, you can also just look it up. My Instagram, my Facebook, and my Twitter accounts, I'm all active there, and if you have any suggestions for any future videos that might come out, like a new deck tech, a future gameplay video, or a general discussion video in general, I know I said general twice, but let's move on from there. Please don't be, don't be shy to hit me up on my socials and fire away with whatever suggestions you may have. Lastly, a little bit of upkeeping on this because I realized, uh, as I mentioned before, when I was going to be going, uh, I was going to be going weekly. A lot of things have come up, and I 
I'm going back to a bi-weekly schedule as I find this to be the more pertinent and probably the best course of action for the time being. So beginning today, every, every other Friday, I will have a new video up for you, whether it be a deck tech, whether it be a gameplay video, or whether it be a discussion video in general, there will be one every two weeks. So with that, thank you so much for watching this video. I do truly appreciate it if you made it this far in the video. And I'll check you guys out in two weeks time for another Horror Brew Deck Tech. So until then guys, cheers everybody.